We're excited to talk with you. We've been working with you for a few years now, I believe. Yeah, that's correct. At least three years, I think. So let's dive in. What's what's a little bit about your background story? So I am originally from Texas. I have a computer science degree from Baylor University down in Waco, Texas. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was in college, I changed majors about seven times before <laughs> I decided to go with computer science. <laughs> I have a music background, so I wanted to do that, and I thought I might want to be a doctor, which I is totally not me anymore. But um, <laughs> so after I got um, into computer science, and I always enjoyed math, I have learned about myself. I really like to solve problems that have a concrete answer to them. So I think that's why I always enjoyed math because there's a right answer and a wrong answer. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I graduated college, I uh, actually got a job with this company called BSG. They're no longer in business anymore, but they uh, were a consulting firm and it was kind of like, hey, you're on the bench. You're not doing anything. Go learn this technology. And so I really got a lot of great experience right out of college to be able to um, kind of figure out what I was interested in, what I didn't want to do, and then uh, started working, you know, uh, with databases and realized I really liked that. So Awesome. And yeah. how did you get into SharePoint specifically? Yes. Yeah, so SharePoint I started working with because I used to work with this product called BizTalk Server, and it's still around. Um, I was really heavily involved in BizTalk in about 2006, and it's a middleware technology that allows you to integrate like JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, um, all kinds of different applications. And SharePoint was one of the applications that it integrated with. Mm-hmm. And I figured out, okay, SharePoint, this thing is annoying because it just seems like you would always have to tell it don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Um, But that was kind of my first exposure to it. But because I have experience with databases and then with this talk, SharePoint was really a natural next um, product to learn. And now that I work with SharePoint, it's one of my favorite products to work with. I really enjoy it. And I think it's really useful and really helpful to all the clients that we work with. Tell us a little bit more about SharePoint, the good, the bad, and the ugly. What should people know? Um, so I feel like SharePoint online specifically is frustrating to people. Um, it definitely is beneficial to companies that are implementing office 365 because they have one place where they can collaborate documents. So that is really useful. The hard part is that because Microsoft is always, um, putting out new features and you don't necessarily know when you're going to get that new feature or what that new feature is, Mm -hmm. it can be frustrating to like administrators because they can say, okay, well, we know we're going to start getting a lot of calls on this because it's a new feature and people don't understand what it is. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just something that end users kind of have to go, okay, I understand that it's not going to always be exactly the same all the time, but Mm -hmm. underlying it still works the same way but it can be a little frustrating when you're used to doing things one way and then all of a sudden oh hey there's a new little button I never saw before or oh hey I didn't realize that that worked like that that can be challenging technology changes so quickly what are some tips you would give people to stay on top of technology one thing that we've done with uh, office 365 with SharePoint online and with power bi is if you have a twitter account even Mm -hmm. if it's not something that you actively are tweeting about yourself Mm -hmm. um, if you'll subscribe to the office 365 community and get tweets from them they'll tell you hey this is about to come out same Mm -hmm. thing with power bi you'll get notifications in a much more effective and quick manner if you'll uh, subscribe to those Twitter feeds than if you just try to look for blogs and things like that that are online because the Twitter feed is going to be the most uh, up-to-date way to stay on top of things. And do you have any favorite technical blogs? Um, well, I use SQLServerCentral.com for any mm-hmm. SQL Server-related questions. Um I use Google a lot just to say, how do I blah, 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 and then ask the question. Mm -hmm. Um, If I'm working with beginners that work with SQL Server, there's a a blog called SQL Authority, and the guy who writes that, he does a really good job of just laying out in very simple terms, step-by-step instructions for exactly how to, Mm -hmm. let's say, for example, you need to back up the master database in SQL Server. That's something that every person that works with SQL Server needs to know how to do, and he's got real good, clear, concise instructions on how to do that. What is your favorite part about being a technical trainer? 
I really like working with new people and getting new challenges. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the travel most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy it when I can explain a concept to somebody, show them how it works, and then they get excited to go back and implement it back at their job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What are, especially with your SharePoint classes, what are some of the frequently asked questions that students ask you all the time? Um, I always get questions about metadata versus folders. And I actually just wrote a how-to article that I put on Accelerate's uh, website to kind of answer that question. Um, a lot of companies that I go into have what I call a culture of folders. So they're just used to that because they have shared drives and they are moving off of the shared drives into SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And so they want to kind of replicate what they that structure that they had from the shared drive into SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And there's much better ways to organize your data than just to use the old folder structure. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, think once, think twice before you use a folder. So that's mm -hmm. something I get asked about a lot inside SharePoint. Um, I also get asked about workflows a lot. I feel like a lot of people move to SharePoint for the workflow and uh, that's very helpful. So a lot of people have been able to you know, move from like a paper process to more of an automated process by being able to use the workflows inside SharePoint. We've in the past been able to use SharePoint Designer to do custom workflows. That's not super easy. And people that are, let's say like an end user, maybe a business analyst, that's going to be pretty technical for them. There are uh, what are called flows that are actually replacing the old workflows in SharePoint for customizations. And I think people are going to really like those. So that's been out for, I don't know, maybe six months or a year or so. Um, and I think as the flows get more and more popular, people are going to start adopting that. But those are questions I get asked all the time in SharePoint. Awesome. Are there any other big no-nos in SharePoint, things that people should be careful of or avoid? Um, well, I always say in SharePoint, you want one version of the truth, okay. right? So you want to make sure, for example, with your employee handbook, you want to make sure that that employee handbook, that there's one version out there and that Fred doesn't have one version and Cecilia has another version and Bob has another version. Mm -hmm. So in SharePoint, what a lot of people in the past have done is they would make copies of documents mm -hmm. and put those in SharePoint. You don't want to do that. You always want to have one version of the truth. You put that document out there, you use the SharePoint versioning, and then you share that document with, or you share, give them the information to be able to know where to find that document and they mm -hmm. re reference it inside SharePoint. What are some of your passions, hobbies, interests outside of work? Um, well, I'm passionate about my husband's company. We make toys down in um, Charlotte, Pennsylvania. It's called Channel Craft. Okay. And so I work trade shows with him and with his team. And um, so I'm really passionate about they make all American made toys, games and puzzles. Mm. And that they've been doing that for 35 years. So that I'm passionate about Dean's company. Mm. And I also work with an inner city group in New York City where I used to live. Mm -hmm. um, we work with inner city kids and it's a Christian outreach organization, mm -hmm. so I'm still involved in those kids' lives. I still want to help them achieve success. We have one kid that's about to graduate from college this year and go to law school. Mm -hmm. We have another kid who's going to be who's a sophomore in college. We have another kid who just got accepted to Hunter College. Mm -hmm. So I'm really passionate about those kids. And then I also work for an, uh, or volunteer with an organization here in, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Pittsburgh called CASA which is court appointed special advocate. So I have okay. two foster kids that I work with and I advocate for them through the court system. So that's been a really interesting learning experience, but I, I'm, I really love those kids and they're awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah, and they've been through a lot. So I'm glad to be able to stand up for them to the court system or in the court system. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for any kids out there who would wanna get into the tech industry? Um, I would say study hard, mm -hmm. do your homework, get into the best school that you can. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can take like a coding boot camp online, if you can, you know, get any practice, uh, there's a ton of free coding resources out there. Mm -hmm. Also, um, if you're interested in, you know, anything technology related, do your research, figure out what schools are going to be able to be the best fit for where you want to go from there. Cause you really need to get a good education 
You really have to understand the technology and you got to work hard, Mm -hmm. but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you think our blog readers should know about you? Um, That I work hard, that I'm passionate about getting students to um, just do the best that they can at their job. And if I don't know the answer, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I will Mm -hmm. look it up for you and do the best that I can when it comes to finding it out. Excellent. Well, Shelly, thank you very, very much. We really appreciate working with you at Accelerate, and we look forward to an amazing 2018 together. Okay, I agree, and I've enjoyed working with Accelerate immensely, so it's been a great experience.